So there was a time when you could farm all of this. Oh yeah, you could right farm this. this right it, yeah, you you could farm this easy. I mean, it was good dirt when I was 15 years old. Paul Jackson is a seventh generation farmer on Maryland's eastern shore. You see that what it does to the grasses is, you know, some soybeans, some crops tolerate a little bit, but nothing tolerates it. But unlike the generations before him, Paul must deal with the newer challenge of rising sea level. Part of his land made bare and useless by the contamination of salt water from rising tides on the Little Chop Tank River. On this river, uh, on this farm in particular, uh, I'd say I've seen probably 20 acres go to salt what I, where it gets flooded. It uh, doesn't raise anything. Once, once that salt gets in the ground, it's very hard to, to, there's tricks to do, but it seems like you, we've put gypsum down before and it'll help. It'll tie the salt up, but it, next tide comes, it's money wasted. Paul's farms are in Dorchester County, where the impact of rising sea level is seen in multiple ways. When I came here, the, the land was attached to that dock. You could just see the pilings past that, that, that tree that's fallen. Um, in many areas of Dorchester County and, and also Talbot County are seeing that kind of, kind of erosion. You know, we're losing several feet here a year. Professor Mike Roman and Dave Namazi are scientists at the Maryland Center for Environmental Science near Cambridge in Dorchester County. They are working on ways to manage the impact of sea level rise, erosion, and more frequent storms. One measure, the concrete blocks in the cove are intended to create an oyster reef to mitigate damage from waves. So well, sea level rise is happening all over the world. When you heat water up, it expands a little bit. So just the act of heating itself is going to increase. Um, when the, the melting of the ice in the poles falls in the water, that increases sea level rise, just like dumping a bug, bunch of ice in a bathtub. A one-foot rise in sea level is expected by 2050, which would put southern Dorchester County underwater. Already, communities must deal with flooding from higher tides. We have people here that are working, and they get a call saying, the school bus has to leave early today because otherwise we can't get through the high tides. You know, if you're uh, an EMT, you, you move the, the emergency vehicles where you could get access in, in, in the high tides. And so that's occurring in Annapolis, Oxford, St. Michael's, Baltimore, as we speak. Just think of a foot higher. Coastal areas with thousands of properties in waterfront and low-lying areas are at elevated risk of flooding. The center works on research about planning to get critical infrastructure out of harm's way. Are your police stations, are your hospitals, are your fire departments going to be high enough in these communities today where, where they certainly might have been high enough 50 years ago or 60 years ago when they were being planned and built? Concern goes beyond coastal areas. Twice in a two-year period since 2016, heavy rains led to devastating flash flooding in Ellicott City. Scientists say the future holds more of it as climate change causes patterns of bigger storms and longer droughts. That, that riverbed has been controlled over a number of years. There's been a lot more development. All that rain hits that river system in a very short period of time, which can't move that much water that quickly. So flooding begins. Back in Dorchester County, at the produce market named after his daughter Emily, Paul Jackson wonders about the future of his farms. But what's it gonna be when my kids are here? You know, do you, will the farm even be here? can do a lot of things to protect it from erosion, but the sea level rise, you can't do enough work to protect it. On Maryland's Eastern Shore, I'm Jane Miller.